Hello, welcome to the Scratch Coding class. In today's video, we are going to be continuing with the Beginner's Guide to Scratch. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And today is lesson seven. So this lesson is all about functions and my blocks. So we are going to understand what functions are. We are going to create and use my blocks. We are also going to pass parameters in the functions and we are going to understand how labels work with functions. So let's get started. Okay, but before I start talking about my blocks, I just want to explain briefly what functions are. So functions in coding are very powerful. They allow you to modularize your code. So for example, if you have a lot of blocks, instead of just copying lots of blocks every single time in a program, you can reuse all that code and put it into a function, which is just one single block on Scratch. And then we can just keep using that single block. And there is a lot you can do with functions. You can pass in parameters into functions, which we'll be looking at later. But to start off, you need to create a my block. So go down here, select my block, make a block, and don't worry about all the stuff on the screen right now. I will go over that later. Uh, right now, we need to name our block. I'm going to call this function. There we go. And there is our my block. And as you can see, we have kind of this that have just appeared on screen and this is basically you have to define the block because Scratch doesn't know what your block's going to do. You need to define it. So you need to give it a series of commands. So let's just do a very easy program to start off with. So basically we are going to get the sprite to say hello. And then let's say we maybe play a sound like this. So now it won't do anything because we need to actually call this function in the program so when green flag clicked and we go down here and drag this and then this is the function so when the green flag is clicked essentially what you're doing is you're making a script like that so let's just put this back to normal and we can test this out so that was an example of a very simple function call on scratch and now we're going to look at different data types and parameters Okay, so now we're going to create another my block. We are going to make basically a function that adds two numbers together. So we're going to call this add numbers. And then we need to add in two inputs. And basically a parameter is like a variable. And what we just did is we just added two parameters. And basically they're just basically data you pass into the function. And the function can basically use that data. And it basically is similar to a variable. And we have number and text over here, and this is basically for strings or integers and floats. And we have a boolean over here, and this is basically a true or false value. We are going to look at that with a separate function. We're going to just start off with integers, floats, and strings. So we need to name our parameters. So we'll call this num1, and then we're going to call this num2. Okay, and there's a function right here. So we need to go when green flag clicked. And then what we need to do is we need to ask the user for two numbers. So let's just type in input one, and then we need to create a variable and we need to save that value onto a variable because you can't have two answers because the answer is going to be different every single time. When we ask another question, the user's answer is going to be different. So then this block changes and you can't pass that in to the function. So we need to add a variable. So I'm going to call this input one and then we set the input to the answer and then we just duplicate that code and then we go input two and then we're going to create a new variable and we do that over here and we'll call that input two and then we just set input two to the answer and then we call the function because if we don't call it the function won't do anything and then we need to pass in our values so we're going to pass in input one and input two in the parameters and then over here in this function, we just basically need to say the result. So we get an operator here and we just add the numbers. We can just drag the parameter in. So num1 plus num2 and that is our program finished. So let's just test this. Let's say I put in 9 and 9 and then I put in 10, 19. Okay, that works. Now we can make this a bit more complicated. In the last video I did talk about string concatenation and that's basically when you add strings together but you can also add strings with integers. So we can use this join block if you can remember. We drag this here and we we'll basically just say the result is so it's a bit more clear what the function is doing. And also when you name a function you make sure you name the function with a good name because right now I'm just saying add numbers 
and that's good enough. But if you just name a function, like just what we did previously, just call it function, you won't know what's going on in a long program. So make sure you name your functions very well, similar to naming variables and messaging. And now we can press green flag. Let's type in two different numbers. We'll type in 16 and we can type in, let's say 26. The result is 42. There we go. We're going to do one more test. I'm going to type in a negative number, negative 8, and we're going to add 3. The result is negative 5. Perfect. And now we are going to look at Boolean parameters. Okay, so we are going to create a my block, and we are going to call this Boolean. And then we are going to input a Boolean over here. And there we go. And we can just leave it. Maybe we want to rename it. We'll call it parameter. And then we can press OK. And there we go. We have our function. And this time we have this shape, so we're not allowed to pass in values, instead we have to pass in one of these operators we have been looking at. And Boolean parameters are not very common in Scratch. The common use is with an if condition, and that's we're going to try doing that right now, using it with an if condition. So let's say in here we add an if then else condition. So if the parameter is basically true, like this, then we can uh, say true and if it isn't then we know it's false like this okay now we need to actually pass in the parameter into the function so over here we need to call the function and then I'm just going to do two scenarios here we're going to do one that's true and one that is false we'll put a bit of delay in between the functions and then uh, we need to go into operators and then we collect this block um, we're just going to basically say a very simple addition sum. We'll say that 25 plus 25 is 50. That is true. So that's going to pass in true to the function. And when the function sees true, it's going to say true over here, as you can see. And over here, let's just put something false. So that is clearly not equal to 50. So it's going to pass in false to the function. And the function will check the if then else statement. And then it will say false. So we can test this out right now. So firstly, it says true bit of delay and then it says false that's exactly what I wanted that's perfect and now we are going to look at labels okay so labels basically make your function a bit more readable they're, they're basically just text it doesn't do anything it just is in the main function block and you won't really understand until you actually see a label so I'm just going to create a function that will basically pass in the volume of sound being played so let's just call this volume and then we're going to input our parameter and we're going to call this a uh, number and then we're going to add a label and we're going to put percent and that basically is just an easier way of reading look over here that's perfect so we can actually enter let's say if we put 20 percent in this function you know the volume would be playing at 20 percent but if we didn't have that label it'll just be volume 20 and it's kind of unclear what that means so it's essentially just like a comment it's just there to help you read your program and read your function better it's not required to make a function it's just nice to have so let's just finish this volume function so when green flag clicked we'll pass in the parameter into the function and then we need to set the volume to that parameter and then after that we can play a sound um let's just play the meow sound and uh, this looks a bit confusing now because we have a block following a function but essentially what it does is the function will always finish first and then it will return to the main script so over here we have volume 20 percent so it will not play the sound until the volume is set to 20 percent so essentially what it is is you're basically making a script like this if that makes sense but instead we are using a function call so now let's test this out so green flag click there we go let's say i type in 90 percent so it's going to be way louder there we go that is our function complete and now i'm going to test you with a quick programming challenge before we call it for today so for this programming challenge, what I want you to do is I want you to create a function that asks the user for a set of x and y coordinates and then the sprite needs to glide to those coordinates. However, there's going to be a random generator from 1 to 10 and if the number generated is greater than 5, the sprite should only glide for 1 second to the coordinates 
and if it isn't then it should glide for two seconds to coordinates so think about how you will do this you will need three parameters that's all the hints i'm giving you so pause the video have a think okay so i'm going to create the my block right now and we are going to call this glide and there are two ways to do this challenge i will show you the first way now and then i'll show you the second way once we completed the first way so we've got to enter three parameters, one for the x-coordinate, one for the y-coordinate, and one for the random number. Like this. And you can add labels if you want. I'm not going to. Let's just press OK. And there we have our function. And what we need to do now is when going for clicked, we need to ask the user to input the coordinates. So we can say um, x-coordinate. And then we just do the same for y-coordinate. And then we need to create two variables. So we've got a variable here, we'll call this x. We've got another variable, we'll call it y. And then we need to set the variables to the answers. So we need to set y here, and then we just drag the answer blocks, and that is basically our input done. Then we need to call the function, and we're basically going to drag in x for the first parameter, we're going to drag in y for the second one, and for the third one, we are going to drag in our random number from 1 to 10. Okay, there is basically the main program finished. Now we have our function that we need to define. So we're going to use an if then else condition. So if the number is greater than, uh, I think it was 5. So if random is greater than 5, then it would glide for 1 second. So we, we use this block. And if it isn't, we're going to glide for 2 seconds. And then we need to just glide to the correct coordinates. So we can basically use the parameters like this. And that is basically our first um, version of the challenge complete. So let's just say I inputted 100 and then I inputted 0. There we go. It just took 2 seconds to glide. So that meant the number was not greater than 5. And that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And I'm actually just going to reset the position to 0, 0 every single time. Like this. Okay, that's our first version complete. Now we're going to look at the second version. I'm going to delete all of this. The only thing I'm not going to delete is the first part because that's just the same. That's asking you to input. So we're going to create a new block. We're going to call this glide again. We are going to have our two parameters for our coordinates, but we also, we're, this time we're going to use a boolean. So we're going to use this boolean right here. And we are going to call this duration. And you can add a label if you want, I'm not going to, to leave it like this. Okay, we basically input our x and y, it's the exact same thing. So, pass in our values like this. And then we have this boolean that we need to take care of. So what we need to do is we're going to create this and then we're going to have a random number and it's greater than 5. Okay, so if this number is greater than 5, then that boolean is going to be true and then we can have an if condition and then that basically means it's true under the then bit and if it isn't true then it will run the else bit so that is correct over here and it's basically the exact same thing with the motion blocks so we are just going to glide one second here we're going to glide two seconds over here and then we just need to put in our parameters Okay, that is our second version complete. We'll give it a test run. X coordinate, let's put in 50, and we'll put in minus 100 for the Y coordinate. There we go. Perfect, that is our function complete. And I just want to talk about one more thing before we call it for today, and it is about variables, because you can actually pass in variables instead of using a parameter. So you can actually just, for example, maybe not from there, but you can, do this instead and you can do that with y and so on and the reason why you can do that is because variables are global in scratch well at least in terms of one sprite they're global in the sprite but um a function in most programming languages it has to use a parameter because you can't really pass in global values into a function in most programming languages um other than scratch because um what we call we call this like a local variable a parameter so a local variable can only be accessed inside a function and it can be 
access outside that scope. So you can't really, it's not very difficult to be able to pass in global values into functions because the easiest way is just simply to use a parameter because you know the only place that that parameter can be used is in that function. If you use a global variable, you could potentially maybe use it accidentally in lots of different functions that you may not want to use it in. And that's why we have to use parameters when we're looking at other different programming languages, like for example, C++, for example. Um, so it is, while it's okay to pass in variables into functions, I wouldn't recommend it. Good practice is to use a parameter and you're also gonna, um, maybe in other programming languages, functions allow you to return stuff. You can't return stuff in Scratch and you would use those parameters um, to input data and then you would return something out of that function. So that's just um, something that you can keep in mind. Uh, it doesn't really matter in Scratch, but if you are looking to do another programming language, then you will have to use parameters, if that makes sense. And uh, this is not all there is to functions and coding. This is really all there is in Scratch. But if you go into another language, you can always learn more about functions. This is a good starter, but there's lots of stuff. You can return stuff from functions. You can have pass by value, pass by reference, and just a, and scooping, for example. There's lots of stuff you can do with functions. This is just uh, all there is in Scratch at the minute. And that is really going to be it for today's video of the Beginner's Guide to Scratch. I really hope you enjoyed this look at functions. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you in another coding video. Bye for now.